Hi hey everyone. In this video, we'll be discussing the mole concept. Watching this video is one step between to learn how to convert between mass, number of atoms, and moles of a sample using molar mass values and Avogadro's number. Take a look at the picture below where you'll see six different samples and each one is a different element. If you were to ask ask to quantify the number of atoms in each sample, how would you go about doing that? To figure out the number of atoms in a sample, we first need to discuss the concept of relative atomic mass. It's important to recognize that atoms of different elements have different masses, which are said to be relative because they're all in reference to the mass of one specific type of atom, which is carbon-12 you'll see the relative atomic masses listed on the periodic table. This value is key in determining the number of particles in a sample. To better understand, let's ponder the question. If you were in a lab and you had these specific masses of these three different elements, 6.94 grams of lithium, 9.01 grams of beryllium, and 22.99 grams of sodium, which of the sam these samples would contain the most atoms? You'll notice that the numbers listed out front of each element, the masses, are seemingly very specific numbers. And if you investigate the periodic table more closely, you'll see that these numbers actually are the relative atomic masses of each element. It turns out that all of these samples contain the same exact number of atoms, but how many? To answer this question, we'll need to consider how atoms are counted. We could count them individually, but this is often impractical because we're usually dealing with large numbers of atoms in a specific type of sample. We could consider counting the atoms in pairs, so one pair of atoms equals two atoms, or dozens, so one dozen atoms would equal 12 atoms. While both of these statements are true, pairs and dozens aren't convenient when describing the number of atoms in a typical sample. Instead, we'll define a mole of atoms as this seemingly random number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So if we had, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles, what we would say is that that number would be equal to one mole. So one mole of atoms would be equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. This is what we refer to as Avogadro's number. And again, the number might be seem random, but this is actually the number of atoms of carbon 12 that are found in exactly 12 grams of carbon, 12. <laughs> so we're all in reference to carbon 12 with these types of conventions. Keep in mind that this number, 6.022 times 10 23rd, can also be written longhand like this. So pulling it out of scientific notation. This is important to realize that 6.022 times 10 23rd is an extremely large number. <laughs> A mole of anything is the amount of that thing that contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles. For example, if you had one mole of basketballs, that would be defined as 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd basketballs. By the way, if you actually did have a mole of basketballs, you could create an entirely new planet that was the size of Earth, but made of completely basketballs. So that's kind of cool. Back to the example from earlier, this image on the left represents one mole of six different compounds. We now know that these compounds, that these samples, each one contains the exact same number of atoms, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. But if we were to look at the mass of each one, they would be different because we're talking about different elements that are represented in this image. This can be explained by considering the concept of the molar mass of a given element, which is defined by the relative atomic mass listed on the periodic table. The units of molar mass are in grams per mole, where the number out front represents the number of grams contained in one mole. 
So let's look at carbon as an example. If you look on the periodic table, you'll see the molar mass of carbon listed as 12.01 grams per mole. What this means is that one mole of carbon, aka 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms, weighs 12.01 grams. The molar mass for sodium can also be looked up on the periodic table, as with all elements, and that's listed as 22.99 grams per mole. Again, this means that for every one mole of sodium atoms, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd sodium atoms, the mass of that quantity of matter will be 22.99 grams. We can also calculate the molar masses for diatomic elements in a similar fashion. Here, we'll need to look at the molar mass of chlorine on the periodic table, but remember, this is actually the molar mass of a single mole of chlorine atoms. Chlorine, though, is diatomic, so we'll need to multiply that value by two um, to calculate the molar mass of the diatomic compound, Cl2, which we can do and um, calculate the value of 70.9 grams per mole. So why do we care about all this? Why do we care about molar mass? Well, consider if your lab instructor said you'll need 0.5 moles of copper for an experiment. You can't just walk over to a mole balance and weigh it out, but you can look up its molar mass on the periodic table and convert it to grams and use a regular old standard analytical balance to weigh it out. This is the general framework we're going to use to convert between mass moles, and number of particles. When interconverting between grams and moles, it's necessary to use molar mass as the conversion factor. Remember that this value has units of grams per mole, which can also be written out as blank grams equals one mole. The blank indicates that you'll need to look up the molar mass from the periodic table based on your specific sample type. When interconverting between moles and number of particles, it's necessary to use Avogadro's number as the conversion factor. This is the number of objects per one mole. The blanks in this conversion factor indicate the object of interest. For example, one mole of atoms equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. One mole of electrons equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd electrons. As long as the objects you list are the same on both sides, you're good to go. A lot of students are worried about, do they divide by the molar mass or multiply by Avogadro's number? And I'll tell you now that if you let the units lead you, you don't have to remember, do I divide, do I multiply? Just make sure your units cancel as with any dimensional analysis problem. Let's try a practice. So here we have, uh, we're considering how many carbon atoms are in a three carat diamond. Three carat diamond weighs 600 milligrams. Before we start this process, think about this three carat diamond. This is an object that we can see with our eyes. Would you assume that this would be a large number of atoms or a small number? Consider that as we're going along with this problem. First, we wanna sort out what we have, which is the mass of our diamond in milligrams, and what we need, which is the number of carbon atoms. Our strategy is always start with the given. So we're starting with our number in milligrams. Then we need to ultimately end up with atoms. So we can use the framework that we introduced on the previous slide, but that involves first converting the mass from milligrams to grams. We'll do that using the conversion factor from metric prefixes that we discussed in a previous module. Now that we have a unit in grams, we can convert first to moles using the molar mass of the sample. Remember, molar mass has units of grams per mole. That doesn't mean that grams has to be on the top though. It's, it's, a, it's an equivalent um, value. So I'll show you what I mean on the next slide, but here we need grams to cancel so that we're left with moles. And now to get to atoms, we need to use Avogadro's number, which is specifically the number of atoms in a mole. Let's work through this. So first we need to start with our given, which is our 600 milligrams. 
and that's specifically of carbon. Now we need to convert to grams. So you'll remember from a previous video that 1000 milligrams is equal to one gram. Now we need to convert from grams to moles. This will require looking up the molar mass value for carbon on the periodic table, which is for carbon 12.01 grams is equal to one mole. And you'll notice that I put the grams on the bottom here to cancel. Next, I need to convert from moles to number of atoms. I know that in every one mole, there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So now when I do this problem, milligrams cancels, grams cancels, moles cancels, and I'm left with a number of atoms. Remember that that's what I wanted in my problem from the beginning. When I do this calculation by multiplying all the numbers on the top and dividing by all of the numbers on the bottom, I get an answer of 3.01 times 10 to the 22nd atoms. Think back if this matches your prediction. Would a three carat diamond be a large number of atoms or a small number? Some other things that we want to check, besides if our answer makes sense on the, based on what we know about the molecular level, is that it, is our answer reasonable within an order of magnitude? So we would expect for this to be a relatively large number of atoms because this is an object that we can see with our eyes. And we know that atoms are quite small um, so that a lot of atoms would be needed to make up this diamond sample. We can also check orders of magnitude based on the starting mass. So we started with about 0.6 grams, 600 milligrams. And we know that 12.01 grams of carbon is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atom since carbon, since that would be the molar mass of carbon. So we would expect about one order of magnitude lower times 10 to the 22nd atoms in the case of this specific problem based on the fact that we were starting with 0.6 grams of carbon. This video has presented an overview of some strategies to convert between mass, number of atoms, and moles using two different conversion factors, molar mass values and Avogadro's number. Here are some bonus practice problems that you can try out on your own. Check the answer with a friend during office hours or with a tutor. Good luck and I'll see you in the next video.